to death and aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two cousins who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. I'm Monica. And 2021 has only been two days long for us in this recording moment. And I have already been tested. Tested. I was really excited to come on the podcast and be like, guys, this is the best week ever. My sister had a baby and she's perfect. And that is still true. My sister had a baby and she's perfect. And I am an aunt. This is not the first time on the podcast I've said I'm an aunt, but this is the first time I ever, that I'm biologically an aunt. Very excited, very happy for my sister. Everything is wonderful. But then about two hours ago, I got a message from my boss that said, so uh, the Ministry of Education, which is like the Department of Education, in, but I live in a kingdom, uh, has closed all schools for students until at the earliest, the 31st of January. See you at work on Monday. Bitch, to do what? Play patty cake with your coworkers. Like, hopefully, in a perfect world, we will transition to some type of online teaching and I will still be able to give my kids information because that is a whole month of no school. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, the education system here is very different than in America. So, like, I don't even know what that means. And I don't know why... I'm going to put on pants and go sit in an office that keeps the air conditioning too cold to do watch the same YouTube video that I would watch in my bed with no pants on. See, that's when you go into work in sweatpants and a hoodie. And you're like, I'm here. That's all I <laughs> There's a dress code. Oh, don't like that. First of all, I have a uniform. I don't like... Teachers at my school wear uniforms. I mean, oh so do God. students. So do students. Everybody does. There's, it's not, I don't just wear like nice clothes. Well, yeah, I didn't know that. That sucks. Yeah, no. Uh, education is very different here. Even in public schools, there's uniforms for all students and teachers. I don't like that. Oh Honestly, I like it because I don't have to pick out clothes in the morning. True, but then when you get in a situation like this, granted, it'll be very rare. You can't be comfortable. I can wear, well, right now we're working on professional casual, so I can wear jeans and a t-shirt. But I cannot wear sweatpants. Can you wear a hoodie? No. I can bring a sweater into the office. Okay. But also, other than in the office, I wouldn't want to wear one because... It's Thailand. True. Um, so, for you, 2021's been real bedazzled so far. I mean, okay, like, the first was great. Slept in. FaceTimed with my whole family, because y'all uh, had midnight 12 hours after I did. Uh, ate some fried chicken. Watched some movies. Uh... Today, I finally did Christmas with my best friend because we were lazy and didn't do Christmas before today. Um, we played some Mario Kart. And then we found out that we don't get to see our kids for another month. And it really ruined. I literally was like, okay, bye. Bye, I'm playing to the kid to America. I'm done. Yeah, that's, that's kind of shitty, especially if you're coming home in May. So yeah, I only have four more months of teaching and one of them, there will not be any students. So that's awful. I might just quit my job. Yeah. Just kidding. I won't. I really don't want to lose the bonus that I get for completing my contract. So. 
money. Um, twenty twenty one for me was I, I currently it's the second, so I've only have gone through the first because it is like ten a.m. of the second. Nothing really exciting has happened so far. Um, the day itself was fine. Did a lot. I, I went to like my little witchy shop. I looked at some of the stuff. I played with one of the cats in there. Um, came home. It made like a little spell jar necklace pendant thing and super cute and I love it. Um, and then I kind of just vibed out, played Among Us for a little bit, and then I ruined my whole fucking night. Whole fucking night by watching this episode of Hemlock Grove. And we will get into it more when the time comes. So this episode of Hemlock Grove was so bad that I'm not even pouring myself. I'm just drinking from the bottle today. If I could be drinking from the bottle and it wasn't, it was socially acceptable to drink at 10 a.m., I'd be doing it. Like, this was the first episode, that because Mary-Kate had watched it before I did, that I had to call Mary-Kate in the middle. I'm like, I literally cannot get through this episode without talking about it, like, right now. I'm like, what the absolute shit is happening? And mind you, when I called her, I was halfway through the episode where it was like, I was viewer, we were, like, both viewer mad at things because, like, we're getting attached to character development and storytelling where it's making sense. And in the last five minutes of the episode, I'm like, no. I'm done with this. We're not doing this anymore um, because we just sucked. Last night when I watched the episode, it ended and I stared blankly at my computer screen for 10 solid minutes. And mind you, I don't, I don't do silence. I literally don't ever like I'm always watching something or listening to a podcast or like, I literally never sit in silence. I'm incapable of it. My brain does not function that way. I stared at my computer screen, didn't check my phone, didn't turn anything off, just stared for 10 minutes. And then immediately texted Monica and Courtney that I was very sorry, but I was quitting the podcast and I was done. I was like, it's been a good run, but I'm fucking out. Also, Mary Kate, keep talking. I'm just gonna grab a, um, grabbing a hoodie real quick because I'm in a tank top and it's freezing here. So, oh, Hold that's on. nice. Uh, what is the temperature there? Uh, it's like it, it feels like 25 outside right now. I was about to say, oh my god, it's 25 here too, but it's 25 Celsius. Celsius. No, it's really it's 77 degrees. Yeah, no, it is freezing here, which so again last night. It's been out a lot, but we got some. Where's my, where's my switch it back to the right temperature? Oh yeah, yeah, it's twenty four degrees, but that is Celsius in Fahrenheit. It is seventy five. There you go. We're like the same temperature, but in different fonts. No? Okay. Anyway, that's not just as bad as this episode. Um, I'm dreading talking about this. I, like, I know we're going to get so passionate about everything in between from the beginning to the very last five minutes of the episode. And I'm going to be like, that was for nothing because this one thing that we're going to see and that we're going to talk about is going to literally just be like, okay, well, I don't want to watch this anymore. So... Nobody watches our podcast or listens to our podcast without having A, watched the show, or B, giving zero fucks about ever watching the show. So yeah. I'm just going to say it right now. Fuck this. Yeah. Because in... Season one, episode two, I said, I'm cool with both horror and sci-fi, but we don't need to add aliens into a show that already has too much going on. Mm -hmm. Granted, I don't believe what we added was aliens per se we don't know yet because we don't know yet except for that the title of the episode told us who's 
Demons and dog stars. Demons and the dog star. Yeah, so, like, but he, he's, he's fucking something. A demon. That's what, if that's what demons look like, I ain't afraid of them. I'll fucking run out and kick them in the ass. What the fuck? I, sorry. Are you still there, Em? Yeah. My friend tried to call me, and I told her, I said, I'm filming. Where'd your face go? I can't find your face. Hi, I'm here. Uh, uh, oh, back to meeting. Okay. All right, hold on one second. Uh, I gotta... Who is it? My friend Allie. She probably's calling me about wedding stuff. And I can't talk to her. I'm sorry. Um, she texted me, she's like, are you up? It's after 10 a.m. And I was like, don't try and call me or get a hold of me. If it's before 10 a.m., I will not be up. Do you not know me? And so she said, literally, 10.01. Let me call you real quick. It's 10.24. Um, yeah. So... This episode is called Demons and the Dog Star, which might be the dumbest episode title ever, but then again, this might be the dumbest episode of television I've ever watched in my entire life. Yeah. And I once binge-watched Fanboy and Chum Chum. (laughs) Yeah, honestly, so the thing that I think irritates us the most about the way that this episode ended and about the way everything was portrayed, like, yes, there were things that I didn't like that, like, storyline-wise that happened, but because, like, that was supposed, like, it wasn't because, like, oh, it was shit writing, oh, it was shitly, like, produced. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna like everything that happens in a show. If I did, that probably wouldn't have any good conflict. No. And so with a lot of the, our feelings changing and a lot of things going on, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like I, uh, I, I, with, with this ending, it made it feel like such a great season. Like me and Mary Kate had literally, but I think it was since episode two or three, we were like, this season's actually really, really good. And for it to be thrown away, and like completely tossed aside within but, so so you know how like the reviews at the beginning of season two were like it had such good potential and then it dropped the ball i've been on eggshells the whole time because i'm like when is it going to drop the ball when is it going to drop the ball and then we were on episode nine and it was still really good and i was like maybe they just didn't get it yeah and then this it season doesn't... finale happened and they did not drop the ball. They dug a hole all the way to China, threw the ball into it, and then threw a hand grenade on top of it. Yeah. Like, we, like, it's really bad. Not was it also done poorly. Like, we have seen CGI effects in this show before, and they've been very good. Not was it only done poorly visually. The, first of all, the design of it what the fuck it is a stingray it's a stingray with pterodactyl claws and a man's face excuse me who what you couldn't make it look at least somewhat cool where i could kind of get over the fact that we're dragging this shit into it you had to do uh this you you had to make it look shitty too like you couldn't have made him look like a cool if if he's supposed to be a demon like make him look like a stand not i don't want to say it's stereotypical demon but like make him have like not see earth tones and more like i don't know hell earth tones where it's a lot of red black brown and like grungy and like he could look scary and gross and be done right but you like it's like the thing that angers me the most is that, like, it would have been a really cool plot twist if it was executed properly, and he just, I think the thing that turns me off from this, it looks so bad, and I'm not sure what species or thing he is, if they're trying to hint at demon and go for demon, make him look more demon-esque, and not like a fucking stingray with pterodactyl claws. So here's the thing. I remembered 
somebody on the Twitter saying that the monster looked like one of the monsters in the still photographs of the credit scene. So it just pulled up all the pictures of the credit scene. And the only one that I never could identify in season one why it was there is in fact a weird man demon. But zero things about the appearance are the same other than man face and wings. Because if they had made him look like the man demon in this drawing, great, cool. It would have been a lot better. To be honest, I didn't, I, I did hate, I hated it as a plot twist. I really did hate it as a plot twist because it just felt so, so jammed in there. Yeah, that's true. But I think that the visual aspect is, was so bad that even anything that I can find story-wise to justify the plot twist is gone. Yeah. Like, when I was saying anything like this would have been, if if his design would have been, like, if, it, like, I understand, like, budgetary things and stuff like that, fine. If you have a budgetary restriction, like, it cost them zero dollars to not put that in the show. Like, they didn't have to do that. The, the season isn't based on a book. Season two and three are literally just spinoffs for the writers. Basically, a spinoff of the book. Because this was not in the book. So, they did not have to put this. If they wanted to make the Doctor be some sort of, like, demon thing, they could have done it in a so much better way besides the way that they ended it and the way it looked. They could have done something really fucking cool with him design-wise. I but literally... They- I literally felt like I was no longer watching a horror TV and I was watching a really, really bad Doctor Who episode. Honestly, yes. Like, not even a good Doctor Who episode, a bad Doctor Who episode. Like, the entire 13th Doctor bad, bad Doctor Who episode. Like, it's just... I... mm, I, I, this episode, a lot of crazy, obviously, if you're watching and you know, and you've seen the episode, a lot of crazy shit, like, happened that, like, I was anticipating, like, I was, like, anxious the whole, like, I was angry, but, like, I was, like, angry because I'm, like, why the fuck is this happening to her? Why is it happening to this character? Because, like, you're just normally mad at certain things that happen in those like, shows. But the other thing that's crazy to me is, literally last week, if you watch last week's episode of Death and Aliens, Monica and I said, how are they going to wrap this season up? They just killed off the most important plot point of the season in the second to last episode. Like, what are they gonna do? So I was expecting something big. I was expecting something crazy. I was expecting something that was more of a setup for season three than anything else. Mm-hmm. Zero, zero percent would have ever guessed this. Yeah. Um, there, there was a lot of, um, a lot of, you know, things that just, like, I wish could have been done better, and that the thing I wish would have been done better literally was the ending. I think they did a good job. (laughs) It's just so frustrating, because if I think about the episode, and I pretend that the last 10 minutes weren't a part of the episode... I would have been fine. It was actually, like, I didn't necessarily particularly enjoy the direction it went from a fan point of view. Yeah. But it was a good episode. And then they just took it and ran with it. Like, they... Direction. Like, I feel like I understand why season three is is so low rated because if it's focusing around this bullshit that finished off the end of season two, like, the direction of season two was so good. But they also, honestly- like, also, like, I can imagine that these, like, show creators probably didn't 
think, oh, we're only going to have three seasons and then we're going to be done. They probably went into it thinking like, oh, if we're spinning off the show, we can keep going and we can tell more story. And then this was so bad that their ratings in season three and their viewership numbers in season three must have just plummeted. plummeted. Because I said this at the end of season one, but I will say it again. So this season two finale was July 11th, 2014. Season three did not premiere until October, 2015. That is 18 months. I promise you I would not have watched season three. Oh yeah. Except for that I would have because I'm a psychotic OCD completionist person who can't ever start a show and not finish it because I'm insane. But I would not have been happy. I, with how long it was, I don't think I would, I kind of, I feel like I would kind of forget about it. I'd be like, oh, that was shitty. Okay. Because honestly, I would be like, oh, they're definitely not coming back for a season two, uh, season three. That shit fucking sucked. And I would have just like, yeah. oh. I have an Excel spreadsheet of every television show I've re- created that is color coded um, based on what I've seen and haven't seen and whether it is still on the air or not. So, and Courtney has seen this so she can vouch for me um so i would still have had to finish it because i'm literally insane good for you then if i could put that much effort into like i don't know washing my dishes or like finding a boyfriend that would true now since everyone has kind of understood where we are on the end of this episode, I want to get through this as gracefully and as quickly as we possibly fucking can, and then never fucking touch it again. Dude, I can't wait for him. Until time. next week when we have our season recap episode, which we will again be joined by special guest Miss Courtney Cloud, and um, I can't wait. Then I can't wait really waste a whole 10 weeks and just thoroughly fucking hate the show like i don't see season three having any saving graces i really don't see it i do, i simply do not like no no just sorry this episode was so bad that i'm gonna eat kit kat bites and drink wine because nothing else makes me feel good. Honestly, I don't blame you. So, the, um, get into the cliff notes, Mary Kate, so we can get this shit. As I said before, we are watching season two, episode 10, Demons and the Dog Star. It premiered on July 11th, 2014, and the ratings took a big old dip from 8.0 to 7.7. It's still too high for the end of the still season. Still too high. But the uh, age group that liked it the most this time was 45 plus women. Old ladies really were into this episode for some reason. Old ladies really like that reptilian fucking shit, don't they? Maybe I was like better divorcees really liked the Olivia arc. Yeah. Anyway. It was written by Charles H. Egley and directed by David Strayton. I did not take any notes on them because they are both returning to us from earlier this season. And the blurb, that's the word. The word blurb disappeared from my brain for a minute. I was like, what the fuck do they call that thing? The, the, the long thing. The, the words about the thing. The words about the thing. The the words about the thing say, Peter recuperates at home, which that was like a quarter of a scene. (laughs) At the White Tower, Roman takes care of unfinished business, again, barely, and Norman has a final confrontation with Olivia. Final being a much more operative word than I anticipated. Yeah. I knew it was coming, though. Called it last week. You did. Also, if there wasn't that, there would have been no death this 
see this episode or like this season not really i mean a lot of people died but a lot of useless people died yeah like i knew we were going to lose a big character this episode i knew it was gonna happen and he's the only character that literally has nothing left everything about it literally his only thing left was olivia but he didn't even care about that so he has no ties to anyone roman isn't even doesn't even care for him anymore and so it's like he literally has nothing left to lose like his character is disposable at this point kill him like as that, that's literally how i knew it was going to happen just because he didn't have his daughter he doesn't have marie olivia he he doesn't want to be with olivia he tried to reach out to pete uh to uh roman roman doesn't want anything to do with him so literally what does he have left nothing shelly oh shelly true that's the only thing he had left to shelly So we start the episode with uh, Roman and Peter putting all of the cult bodies into a truck to deliver to the White Tower. And um, my only note about that scene was, that's a choice. Because for some reason, Hemlock Grove does not use a lot of music that is not just like <laughs> underscoring like they use a lot of like the 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 hemlock grove themes are really beautiful very very rarely is there a like song that is a part of the scene like when roman was listening to music because he was angry and it was his birthday and then that transitioned to being the background music or like when olivia was singing like usually if there is a non-instrumental song in the background it is starts as part of the scene and then carries on mm. nope we're just throwing some bodies in a truck listening to gangster rap for some reason yep and that also continues later on in this episode when peter and roman don't listen to gangster rap no, and for some reason, Peter was like, I'm probably gangster rap to go to bed real quick. Nighty night. Yeah, he did. I forgot about that. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe in what going- universe does Peter Wolfboy Romantic listen to gangster rap? It do- he doesn't. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but he, he doesn't. No, and like, I no, I'm, I mean, like, there was this website that um, reads your Spotify to filth. Um, And uh, it told me that my Spotify playlist uh, was minivan swag. So my my two biggest ones were aging boy band posters on your wall, uh, Gaga Cooper makeout bad. And then funeral slash wedding vibes <laughs> bad. And I'm like, oh, the accuracy. <laughs> Mine was a uh, Broadway music Tony's watch party bad, but also minivan swag bad. So if that doesn't tell you what kind of ADD goes on in my brain, I, I don't know what does. So I'm not judging anybody with a wide berth of musical choices. But no. That was just not the right choice. <laughs> no. So, after the boys are doing whatever the fuck they're doing, um, we go back to the house to Destiny and Miranda who are cleaning up the house and Destiny's like, damn it, we're out of bleach. Because apparently the six gallon jugs that they already used wasn't enough bleach for how much blood was in that house and then miranda becomes a little bitch baby bitch mother bitcher and starts like granted yes something dramatic did happen to all of them but it's like she's the only one that's ever fought it she's the only one that's like she's like nadia it was her she she stared at him and she went to And I was like, bitch, you're just talking about this now? Also, like, fuck off. You're a millennial. Handle trauma better. Like, you don't put the fucking sparkle emojis next to any traumatic thing that's ever happened to you? What are you? Okay, that's a Gen Z thing. Um, 
no, as millennials, we pretend trauma didn't happen and just exist as if the world isn't crashing around us. That is also very fair. We, we, you, don't, you don't address your trauma. You bury that shit. And then there's us who are like, haha, I was depressed and neglected as a whip. Like, what? Nay, nay. So she starts crying and is like, you guys are monsters. You kill people. I don't want to be here anymore. And it's then... Like, I, hate social- I hate you. I hate all of you. And I hate you too. You're a monster. I saw you turn into a beast. And she's like, I don't even know what you are. I'm like, bitch, you was sucking down his neck. Put two and two together, you dumbass. Right. I don't even know what you are. Did you not watch Twilight? Probably not. That's the real reason she's messed up. True. Um, so then she says she's going to leave and the boys calm her down and make her stay. And my note says, you should have just let her stupid ass go home. But here's the thing. I was only worried about Miranda, like going and like saying some shit to like cops and then like, because she would, she would. But let's be real hundred right now. Who would believe her? True, if she goes to any cop outside of Hemlock Grove, they're gonna be like, you're insane. Yeah. And if she goes to the cops in Hemlock Grove, Michael's gonna tell her he doesn't believe her and act like she's crazy because he already knows and is trying to, and working on his own plan to take care of it. Yeah. Who, who is she gonna tell? Plus, she's a terrible driver. She would crash before she got to anyone. True. Just kidding. Apparently that's not true. We learned that this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I have a lot of, I hate Miranda. I hate Miranda. I hope she dies. She fucking sucks. Um, and then uh, Destiny. I have a note that says he's going to give the bodies to Price. So I guess Peter asked Roman what he's going to do and why he's going to take him to the tower. And he says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And I go, oh, more food for the blood machine for the blood machine Um, and then destiny and roman have a really sweet moment hold on where not yet destiny gives miranda a drink to like help her calm down but she like is digging through a drawer and like mixing things and like she gives her a drink and i was like what did she give her and then roman was like oh did you give her some magic gypsy potion learned through all of your secret training and she goes yup like it in an orange juice Gave a breastfeeding mother Vicodin. Now, Miranda's body weight is not very large. And Destiny put a fairly solid dose of Vicodin in that orange yeah, juice. Also, and also, Destiny licked her fingers from the di- but after the Vicodin powder was like to lick the rest of it off. Of her well, you know, do what you gotta right. do. But like, what I'm saying is. In real life, that's the end of Miranda's story arc for the whole episode. She's knocked out. Nothing that happens for the rest of this episode happens if someone her size took that much Vicodin, unless they were a hardcore druggie. So we just learned that Miranda snorts pills, clearly, because otherwise I don't know how any of the rest of this episode happened. Then, then Destiny and Roman have a moment. And um, Rom- Roman's like, after they like had a little exchange about the Vicodin, Destiny, um, she was like, you, you really saved Peter in there. She was like, well, he would have done the same for me. And then she goes, hmm, I guess I really was wrong about you. And I like, pat him on the shoulder and like headed out. And I was like, and I saw on the interwebs that some people were trying to ship Destiny and Roman after that moment. And I was like, no, Roman and Peter forever. Yeah. Forever. Um, and then my next note just says, what the fuck? But I think I know what it's about. 
Well, if that's the case, yeah, because it's a, it has to be about Miranda. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that's the next note is. Well, because I thought maybe it was something else. I didn't realize this happened as soon into the episode as it did. But I was like, I don't know. I don't know what else I was that confused about that early on. No. See, Miranda goes to breastfeed Nadia, but then her titties start leaking blood. So, not, no. No, she's not, she's not even trying to breastfeed her. She's telling Nadia that she loves her and that she's an angel, and blah, blah, blah. And then she goes downstairs to talk to Anna the cranky old lady, and um, who, by the way, earlier in the episode when they were scrubbing the bleach off the floor and having a discussion about the cult being dead and Miranda was having a breakdown, Conway's dead body was just there the whole time and Anna was laying on the floor crying and he was like, Glenn was talking about how he was a good Christian man and he deserves a proper burial and they're all monsters. So Anna's also not handling any of this very well. Um, she also didn't have sex with a werewolf and a vampire, so, like, she's allowed to be struggling a little bit more. Yes. Um, so Miranda, trying to be a normal person, maybe the Vicodin just made her try to be a normal person. It didn't work. Well, she goes to Anna, and she's like, listen, if there's anything I can do to help you, like, she's trying to, like, be a person, and then her nipples just start bleeding everywhere and her and Anna both scream. I'm sorry, but the camera work in that scene and Anna screaming made me feel weird. She's like, ah, 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 ah. like that's how she sounded. It made me uncomfortable. I don't like, I, I didn't like that. And then Miranda's face also just makes me uncomfortable. So. Honestly, I just didn't really. Sometimes the blood in the show is really realistic, and sometimes it's really not. Like, that looked like it was CGI to spread on like, her shirt. That was like, it was like this color red. Yeah. That's not blood, that's jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> then, right after we have Miranda and, uh, and um, Anna freaking out, we go to Norman outside Olivia's house, ready to do something he was there for, for Michael. And I wrote, great, stupid Norman, gonna be stupid. And he goes in, he coats the knife in the thing Michael told him to, and he, and in I've this read. moment, yes, and in this moment, uh, Norman sees all the medication and all the pills and stuff that Olivia's taking. Which, okay, theoretically, what happens is Norman goes in there, he sees that Olivia's in the shower, and takes this moment to go to her medicine stand to get the heparin to coat the knife. Now, we're going to do a, a quick Google search. Heparin is an anticoagulant, like a blood thinner. Which makes sense for what he and Michael need to do with it. What? Why would Olivia just happen to have heparin hanging yeah. out on her medicine table? Whack. They needed to find a way to put it in cohesively with the storyline. It would have made sense if he brought it and just like did it there. Yeah, also why how are you gonna how are you gonna be for sure that she's gonna be in the shower so you can have the time to coat the knife? Like if you wanna stab the bitch, it needs to be ready before you get there. Yeah, get it do it in the car. So again, stupid. And so he's coating all that shit and he sees all the medication. Um and then it cuts to uh cuts away and we go to price and Roman discussing the bodies that are in the van and um and once again price cracks me the f up i love price i like it's very weird last season i was not having him and this season i'm like we are here for price price is like yeah dr crazy russian lady like 
you did me a huge favor. And Rowan's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then he's like, yeah, her name is blah, 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 blah. But in the Iraqis called her blah, 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 which basically translates. And it was like this really intense, like Arabic. And then he just goes, which basically translates to uh, bad news in sensible shoes. I thought it was funny as hell. And um, Roman's like, dude, will you just fucking get rid of the bodies? And he's like, what oh, that's not how you ask me for a favor, bro. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what did you even do? Like, why did you kill this many people? Why do I gotta cover up this? And he goes, I didn't do it on purpose. Like I didn't feed. I just, they came to my house and tried to kill me and my baby. And Price goes, did they happen to have bows? like some type of arrow as their weapon. And um, I was like, how did you know that? And then I was like, ooh, he knows about the cult. He doesn't know about the cult. But um, he knows that Bishop Francis is dead because he was shot with an arrow. And that means that the stock of Godfrey Institute that was owned by Bishop Francis is now not. And Price wants Yes. Keep talking. I'm just I'm just changing location because my back is starting to hurt because this chair sucks. Um, my next one says Michael sucks. Okay. On to the next one because that's always true. Yeah, no, he uh he sent Norman a text and was like, let me know when it's done. That was all he was in, but I was like, hate you. He literally was Michael's in two scenes this episode. And both of them were just him sitting at his desk, either sending or receiving a text. Yep. And yet, somehow his eyebrows bothered me more this episode than usual. Hmm. I just hate his eyebrows. I, is that why you have, like, such a, like, disdain, like, hatred for Michael? No, I also hate him as a human. Well, I mean, same. But, like... Bad eyebrows really, really bother me. That's her. I mean, mine don't look great right now either, but. I mean, same. Normally they don't exist, but. Well, that's because you shaved them off because you're a dumbass. It's what gives me my spark. No, my friend bought um, a new eyebrow pencil that is like a crayon, pencil crayon and a highlighter crayon. And she's like, but I don't know how to use that. So I was like, here, I'll show you. And I just did my eyebrows really quick at her apartment without looking in the mirror to show her how to use the pencil. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, yeah, I still don't know how to use it. You can keep it. And I was like, dope, new eyebrow pencil. But also I did my eyebrows standing up, barely looking in a mirror. Well, there and you they go. still don't look that bad. So that's nice. Um, my next note says Olivia is so cute, but it's not gonna be enough. Yeah, Olivia's over there showing how she um, like has like this newfound look at life. She's like, I sing love songs now, and has like a tape of her singing love songs. I'm like, okay, there's her American audition, American Idol audition tape. Cool, good to know. Uh, She's like, uh, I've been a really bad mom, but I don't want to be anymore. I'm gonna regain the respect of my kids. I just want to love you with my whole heart. And honestly, she's being really, really cute. But like, it's the kind of cute that like even a normal relationship fight would not be able to forgive that fast. And this is not a normal relationship fight. This is a you murdered my ex-wife fight. And she's like, and you are going to be, uh, and you as my North Star. And she's talking, I'm like, oh my God. Like, and, so um, cute. And Norman literally isn't having any of it. He's like, he like, it sounds like he's about to feed into it for a second. And then he goes into talking about her medication, how, what it's going to do to her, like all the terrible, like absolute worst side effects. That I literally, my next note says Norman is such a prick. Because not only does he, uh... He's like, you have cancer. And she's like, yeah. And he goes, probably going to make your bones really, really brittle, blah, blah, blah. And also cure, uh, ruin your appetite for blood. And she's like, I really, I should have told you sooner. Like, and he's like, 
You killed Marie. He's like, I came here to kill you. But I'm not going to do that. Because it will be much, much better to watch you slowly, painfully die of cancer. Which is just about the worst thing you can say to another human being. Mm -hmm. Olivia might not be a human being. But... And then he leaves. And Olivia's like, oh, fuck me. And then she's like, no, no. Fuck you. And I was like, fuck all of us. Because this is not going to be good. Yeah. Then. We go to the doctor's office and Pearl, the real cute receptionist, is telling him that uh, Miranda called and he decides to be real sketch. And be like, go get cotton swabs, go get tongue depressors, go get, go get new gloves right and now. She's like, she's like, but we already have them. He's like, nope, we don't. Go, leave. Get out of here. Bye-bye. And I'm like... Whack. See, okay, Every there time. is a Twin Peaks reference in this scene because when he first gets there and he's talking to Pearl, he takes a cup of a sip of the coffee and he goes, this is a damn fine cup of coffee, which is a Twin Peaks quote. Um, so just wanted to. Uh, Here's the thing. This doctor gets more and more sus in every scene I've seen him in throughout the season. Yeah. season. Like the first one, he seemed like a normal, happy doctor. And I'm like, okay, like, you're a little too overly nice, like, with Miranda. Like, yeah. Specific. And I'm like, ah, yeah. Like, this was a time when he was, like, trying to get her to leave the office. I'm like, mm. I-, I was thinking he's part of the cult, not the pterodactyl thing. Um, and I was like, oh, God, he's going to be part of the cult. And he's going to take this, want to kill this baby. And he's going to have to kill Miranda. Like, that's why he's trying to get so close to them. So yeah, can, like, it was... I was like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And um, so um, then we go to Shelly, Price, and Priscilla in her bed where Price is getting ready to let her pass on. And she asks Priscilla to stay and he's playing Bach because they went to the concert together um, when she was younger and she loved it. And so he's like, I was hoping to bring fond memories to you. And then, like, her and Priscilla are, like, speaking, like, synced up. Like, they're finishing each other's sentences. It's, oh, and we um, also find out that Jason is in foster care. He did not have to go back to his horrible, horrible stepfather. Exactly. And, um, and in this scene, I have a theory. This theory has no basis in anything other than a gut feeling that I have put together that may be entirely wrong, but I believe that Price is Shelly's dad. I've been having that vibe because of how he acts with her. He just, the way he acts with her, and Olivia said something when she was telling Norman, or Roman, about Norman being his dad, she said that JR couldn't give her kids. She might have said something, like, about healthy kids or normal kids or something, but the way she, like, said it, But then whenever she talks to Norman, she always says Shelly and our son. She never calls Shelly Normans. So Shelly could be JR's. She also could be Price's. But I just, Price just cares about her in a way that it could purely be because of his love for science and the fact that he was able to reanimate her and bring her back from the dead and blah 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 and all of that and like what that means to him but there just seems to be more to it because if that was true he would love priscilla the same Mm -hmm. and he doesn't 
So that was my uh, wild and baseless theory that I came up with while watching this episode. And I was really, really excited to talk about it in the podcast. And then I finished uh, the episode. Honestly, that's a really interesting theory. That uh, It's really interesting. It, th- I mean, I feel like it'd make a like, lot of sense. That the theory is enough for me to watch season three. That's fair. That's fair. Um, also, and then I said, I know Shelly's not really dying, but like this, but like, is, it was really hard to watch. It was yeah, so it was, sad. It was really sad. And like Price is having a really hard time as well. And um, then we go from this and we switch to the uh, scene where Miranda's getting checked up with on the doctor's office with Dr. Creepy Reptile Man. And, but we don't know this yet. And then the doctor's like, oh, we have, like, telekinetic, like, oh, her telekinesis, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, I have no idea what you just said. Can I just have my baby back? And then he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I've been in your interface this whole time. You wouldn't have gotten to Hemlock if it wasn't for me. You are a D- you are a amazing thing in DNA. You have so many eggs in you, blah, blah, blah. No, no, and no. He's like, it wasn't about her eggs. Oh, the baby? Whatever medicine he was... No, that's... Are you sure that's the next scene? Yes. Because it's literally the doctor, God, no, Olivia, no. No, no, no. But that's not this scene yet. This scene, Miranda, or Destiny comes home. And Miranda's not there. Oh, okay. I thought you... No, no, no. Oh. This, this is okay. Because I have... My note, not, note says, not okay, we were right. And then the next scene says, this sick motherfucker. And so, like, I was like, I don't, we're missing, or missing. Oh, something. yeah, we are, because this, okay. I, it goes through right now about the doctor, but then back at the White Tower. Yes. Okay, yeah, because so, I just. Because yeah, okay. I was like, no, I don't think we know all that yet. So it goes to um, the house, and Destiny can't find Miranda, so she's going around and she's looking through the house trying to find Miranda and she goes into Miranda's bathroom and she finds all her like um, medicine that the doctor gave her and she's got this postnatal vitamin bottle but it's like black and Destiny's like that's fucking weird so she takes it and she puts like just a tip bit of it on her tongue and she gets all these weird crazy premonitions about the baby and snakes and like crazy stuff and I was like fuck doctor is the bad guy we were right the whole time Mm -hmm. then we go back to the white tower and norman is confronting price and he is pissed off about shelly's transformation and and about olivia and about everything And Price is like, listen, Olivia really has changed. She really, really has. And Norman's like, no, she's not capable of change. And sorry, you're being real weird right now. I was looking at Oka's boo. No, I know, but you like, no, you like zoned out and then you looked at boo and were like. Oh, because I'm listening to you. It's just my brain's like his stare um and he, so he's like yelling and price is like no she really has changed like she said that she would do anything for you like you're the reason she's changed and in that moment norma realizes hey i fucked up mm-hmm. and um he says so uh, what would happen to shelly if Olivia decided she did want to cure her cancer. And uh, Price says, well, uh, as of three minutes ago, she would be dead. And I wrote, Norman, you ruin everything. And um, we get, they're running to Shelly's room and Norman's like trying to shock her back to life. And he eventually, and he eventually does. But at, while he's while Norman's doing that, on um, the old Shelly, like Shelly, Shelly, um, 
Okay. I started um, running to try to find Priscilla. And um, when Priscilla walks into her room, Olivia's standing there. She's like, hello, dear. And um, then when we see the room again, it's Olivia in there. And Price is like, oh, my God. And it's a massacre. Like, Olivia, like, tore her apart. Ripped her to shreds. And, and then like, she said... Yeah, she said, thanks for that. Really needed that pick-me-up. I'm going to go find my granddaughter now and rubs the blood on his face. And I wrote, well, so much for my good, Olivia. Yeah, I got very mad. Granted, this wouldn't have happened if Norman wasn't a bitch, but then Norman also found out about things about Olivia that kind of, he had no control over feeling, like, mad at her about it, but he could have just killed her instead of making this happen, because none of this would have happened if he would have just killed her. Or else none of this like, would have happened. is Olivia bad? Yes. Yes. Did she do a horribly selfish, evil thing? Yes. Am I still more mad at Norman? Also yes. Also yes. Because um, that one, if he would have just, he couldn't have played happy family just for a little bit. Then we have a quick scene where this is the scene where the rap music comes back for some reason. Peter is trying to rest in his uh, abode, recuperate from the fact that, you know, he got ripped out of his wolf body. And um, mm -hmm. the door opens up and Beaumont wanders in. And my note just says, I was wondering when this fuck was going to show up again. And, uh, of course, he has the nut remover thing pulled out of the bag again. I'm like, oh, great. I'm like, what's this deal with people and their nuts? Um, and what? Yes. Then, then we go back to the doctor's office. And, um, as Monica was saying earlier, the doctor is saying a bunch of stuff that does not make sense. No, literally about, not at all about telekinesis and weird stuff. And what he says, he's like, I was really worried about those religiosos. Like they were gonna come for you. Like, and you don't look like the queen of damn, the damned, do you? You're the cutest baby in the world. And he's like being real creepy. And then what he says about the eggs is he says that the medicine he was giving Miranda through her breast milk was making the baby's ovum increase. So the baby is now has like double the normal amount of eggs for a human. Cause they're trying whatever weird thing he's a part of, they're trying to use her to repopulate something. Huh. I'm t okay, here's the thing. I had said that maybe Miranda's a siren. She has to be some reptilian serpent thing without knowing, like, there might be something in her DNA that has, like, reptilian or serpenty in it, where she, she's a reptile person, too, and doesn't know anything. I, I don't know if it's a reptile person, but there's definitely something weird about her blood. Yes. Um, also, just shout out to my friends in Maine, because uh, apparently this doctor found her because of a blood bank in Bangor. Oh, um. It freaking go, Bangor. No, it's a, it's Miranda's fault. Everything's Miranda's fault. I, I would really have to disagree. That it's Miranda's fault that this creepy reptile demon man stalked her. Well, that no, but like if she didn't go give her blood in Bangor, she'd be fine. Yeah, but she was selling her platelets for money because her abusive boyfriend like tried to kick her out. No, it's the abusive boyfriend's fault. Got it. Yeah. Um, and that's really weird because she did mention that, like... Yeah, she mentioned that she had to sell her platelets to get money before she left Maine. That's the only reason she was able to come down to Hemlock in the first place. And you want to know what? You want to know what's because even funny? sometimes the writing on the show isn't complete crap. That's true. And you want to know the funny thing? The doctor was the person that ran her off the road. He's like, I did everything in my power to get you here. I am your interface. And I'm like, you're my fucking what? No, no, no. He said, he said, you were never in danger that night. I promise as your exomorphic interface. Oh, exomorphic. And I, said, I said, exomorphic. What? You rock man. Because, um, in case anyone knows anything about, uh, earth science, uh, 
a metamorphic something is something that changes within itself, like a metamorphosis, butterfly. Exomorphic is something that changes by an external force, exo, external, um, and usually applies to rocks that are broken down over time through external forces like wind. And mm -hmm. I was like, he's a rock person? Yeah. Huh? I didn't know what it meant. I just knew that it meant there was something different about his outside than his inside and that he wasn't really a human. And I just wrote this sick motherfucker. Mm hmm And then, while this is going on, I thought it was a robot at first, but, oh, never mind. Uh, that completely jumped the gun. Um, so... I mean, exomorphic does make it sound like a robot, but yeah. as they're having this argument and Miranda's trying to remove the baby from him, Olivia bursts in and says, You're done playing mommy. You're done playing mommy. You're a little bitch out of my way, sir. I will take my grandchild. And he's like, I can't do that. She's like, fucking fight me. And then they do. Mm -hmm. They do the fighting. And Miranda does the only smart thing that she's ever done in the, in the right time. She actually, her taking the baby was the right thing to do here. Yes. But she leaves the room and Anna's standing there. And then Anna's like fighting her for the baby. I'm like, okay, she's an old woman. Just deck her in the face and run. You never liked her anyway. She, she's like, I, you know I can hit you, you old bitch. I'm like, well then do it. She and wants to get Anna takes the baby. And I wrote, I feel bad because my note says, Anna, you dumb slut. And she ends up getting her head crushed because Nadia is now attached to Miranda and will do anything to stay safe with Miranda. So she uh, also gives Anna a brain aneurysm through magic googly eyes. Um, and um, while Olivia and uh, the doctor are in there fighting, first of all, you already know something's up with him because she just revampire anti cancer herself and he is able to keep up with her. But she scratches him across the face and his skin disappears. And what looks like a honeycomb is just mm -hmm. left there. And I thought, at first I thought it was, uh, I was like, oh my God, he's a robot. But then it goes, it, it closes in on it. I'm like, oh, or is that scales? I'm like, that's and, fucking. And then um, Miranda calls Roman. Roman is with, Shelly and Norman and Price. And um, Shelly is distraught. She is, first of all, devastated that she woke up in her own body and wasn't able to go through with the process. And then also even more devastated that Priscilla is dead. She's a hot mess. But the phone rings and Roman answers it and hot mess number two, Miranda, is freaking out and she's like, He's got scales under his skin and blah, blah, blah. And like, they're going to come find me. And your mom's trying to find me and Anna's dad and everything's wrong. And he's like, come to the white tower. Like we will protect you. And I said, shit, because Norman doesn't know the baby's alive. And I was very concerned. Yeah. But don't worry. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter now. Then we go back to Peter's predicament where uh, Mr. Uh, Testicle is trying to <laughs> keep some of uh, <laughs> keep, keep uh, Peter's. And uh, this is about the moment when I started watching the show with Monica. And my mm -hmm. favorite commentary was, uh, he is naked, obviously, as one would have to be to have their testicles removed. And um, Monica just goes, oh, Peter's butt. So cute. <laughs> and because like, we're dealing with all this bullshit. And I was like so devastated and angry for the prior scene. And then I was like, oh, but we have Peter's butt. And but my like, question about Peter's butt is how is it so white when he is so hairy everywhere else? Yeah, like, it's literally, I think he shaves his butt cheeks. 
I think he waxes his butt cheeks. Either way, he makes his butt cheeks less hairy. Which, of course, then prompted Monica to question the waxing of the front. Yep. And then... Um, Destiny comes in and uh, comes shows in. absolutely no discomfort with her naked cousin. Um, um, hero. And mind you, before Destiny came in, uh, Peter was ding-dong out fighting the drug dealer. Like, he was getting taken punches, and there are precious valuables out on display with no protective. Punch to the nuts versus the removal of your nuts, though? Like, honestly, it was probably a lot easier. But, like, still, he said, you know, I don't care if my ding-dong's hanging out. I'm going to kick your ass, bro. Butt-ass naked. But then... Destiny walks in, so Beaumont grabs her and is like, kind of hang on to her. And he's like, you know, I've always wanted to test out these parts, uh, my these toys on uh, lady parts, see if I could add those to my collection. And I was like, first of all, disgusting. Mm-hmm. Second of all, he just admitted that he collects and keeps the dead testicles. Third of all, on what part of a lady part would the, I have a feeling of what part they would try to get it to work on, um, because the equivalent of balls for a woman are her ovaries, and I don't think that's designed yeah, to Yeah, we don't, we don't have a lot of dangly bits. And the only semi-dangly bit that's there isn't that dangly, and that would be fucking terrible. There's also 4,000 nerve endings in it. And men, half of the men don't even know where the fuck it is. For those of you who uh, were trying to figure out what we were talking about, ask your boyfriend to find it, because he can't. Um, exactly. So then, uh, Beaumont is trying to attack Shelly and... Shelly, what? Dasna and Peter take off their parts. And suddenly... He just gets shot from behind. Because Peter was about to wolf up. Oh, yeah. Peter was about to wolf up, and Destiny was like, don't do it. Like, don't do it. And like, you need not. to kill me after this. I'm keeping you safe. Yeah, he was like, when I'm done, you're going to have to kill me. But his eyes go yellow, and he's about to do it. And then, boom, Beaumont gets shot from behind. Only there wasn't a boom. It was silent. And Andreas pops around the corner and says, hey there, Crimsicle. <laughs> and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Peter's like, why is there a silencer on your gun? This seems like, what is a gun? <laughs> and uh, he was like, we will talk about that later. I'm pretty sure y'all have need to get out of here. You look a little frantic. You got some work to do. Go ahead. It'll be spotless when you come back. Pop Andreas will take care of everything. I love Andreas. And um, I really think Andreas is like secretly a spy spy yeah but i don't think he's a, like a bad guy to them like, no no, no not like a bad guy spy like he's just he he's yeah he's like inspector gadget he just always yeah. has the right tool mm-hmm. my dog's po- like and he it. he can find it oh yeah he can, oh oh there's no doubt that andreas can't find it no doubt no doubt <laughs> <laughs> then we go back to the white tower to what may be the most the devastating most- scene of the entire show also oh, maybe the, the worst be- maybe the worst shot scene oh yeah show. oh yeah because of the slow it was like quick pace and like slow mo but like quick, quick slow mo yeah the camera work was Interesting. Yeah, it was quite terrible. Um, but basically, Shelly uh, has become inconsolable to the point where Price is having her restrained and monitored, loved just- and monitored because she cannot. And he is very, very pained to do so. Mm-hmm. But, I mean... Shelly's what six foot twenty and like 
stronger than any human. And if she can't control her emotions, like everyone's going to get hurt. So like he has to, he hates that he has to, but he has to. Then he also gives Norman a vial, which may be the same medicine that What's her face? Dr. Chernobyl was going to give Roman. Yeah, most likely. And because it kills Um, Upir. Like, it kills an Upir. And then, about here is where everything goes to shit. There's still, like, one or two good moments left, but about here is where everything no longer seems like a good episode. Yeah. So, Miranda's freaking out, and Roman's like, listen, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to send you to Dr. Price. He can help you. And she's like, no, I don't want to see any more doctors. And they're, like, freaking out. And, but then Destiny and Peter get to the building, and obviously, unfortunately, the building is on lockdown because of what Olivia did. So um, they can't get in. So Roman has to go let them in personally because the uh, guard won't let them in without clearance. And um, he's like, Roman's like, just go look at the monkey. And I wrote, Never leave Miranda alone. This is how the problems start. Yeah. So when Roman tells her to go look at the monkey, Natty does her mind thing and makes the monkey's head explode. And I was like, damn, that fucking sucks. And then Miranda, of course, because she doesn't know what to do, is like, well, I'm going to go run off and go, like, explore the sub parts of the like the basements of this building and go up back stairwells and oh no she knew exactly what she was doing yeah um this obviously this is gonna be clarified as to where she's heading later but why why leave you in suspense she's heading up to the roof to fucking fly away here's the thing i I'd, i'd be happy if she was going up to the roof without the baby i didn't realize she was gonna try to hurt herself. I really thought this bitch was just gonna go toss a baby off a roof. No, I knew she was going with the baby. I knew they were going off together. It did not. I really thought she was gonna go throw the baby off the roof. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if she did just do that. Right, like she is such a selfish person that I really just thought she was gonna throw a baby off a roof. She's also so dramatic where she was talking about how much she hated everyone that she was around that I'd be like, no, it wouldn't surprise me if she tried to do that to herself. Yeah. Um, Then, turns out Olivia's still in the building. Yeah. Back in the building. She she came in and, like, there's guards looking at, like, this big poster board on the wall that apparently has every single person in the family of Godfrey just, like, on it. And then... Yeah, um, it's like the board of directors. And the guard looks at it, and they leave, and then it literally looked like Olivia, like, jumped, off, like, it out of the billboard. It was actually really good, really good screen work yeah. there. But my question is, how did she get in? Yeah. I really thought I missed something. Like, I thought I missed a scene, because I have no idea how she got there and how nobody noticed her. Like, they know what they're looking for. They're on lockdown because of her. How does nobody notice that she's in the building? Well, as Roman says- It's not like they've never seen her face before. Yeah, and as Roman has said, like, you guys run, like, a top-tier thing. You guys, how the fuck can you guys be so stupid? Right, because, oh, because at this moment, the reason they're all looking around the building and they even run into Olivia is because uh, Roman gets security to try to figure out where the fuck Miranda went. Yeah, it's like hide-and-seek. And so then Norman, not Norman, well, yeah, Norman. Yeah, Norman. Norman is on, is on a, he's on a mission. He's on a mission. And then he sees Olivia and they're like, neither of them are slowing down. They're walking fast, faster. And then Norman's like, you know what? She's like, they both stop. And then he goes, stab. And he like, she like brings around and holds him like, uh, and like he's holding her like this. And then she like, they were walking towards each other. I already wrote the note. She's going to kill him. Yeah. 
And then she like breaks his arm and then she like punches through his chest. She's like, for so for 20 years, I've realized I've wanted your heart and then pulls it out. She's like, now it's mine. And I was like, oh damn, that was cold. I think that. Cold. But I kind of loved it. Yeah, she didn't keep his heart. She kind of just threw it on the floor next to him. And then she's like, okay, bad bitch walk. Bad Before bitch. she bad bitch walked away, she took a picture of him laying on the ground from his own phone and sent it to Michael and said, you're next. Mm-hmm. And then bad bitch walk, bad bitch walk, bad bitch walk. I oh, know. And then and- um, Destiny, Peter, and Roman on their search for Miranda come across Norman's uh, heartless body dead laying on the floor. And um, I wrote, Roman needs some serious therapy at this point. Yeah, Roman is, like, really struggling, and it breaks my heart. I love Roman so much. Yeah. I love him so much. Um, yeah, he, need, he needs therapy. Um, so then, they're trying to figure out where she is. And suddenly, Peter and Roman remember that they had a dream, except it wasn't a dream. Remember, they touched hands, and there was a weird vision, and I was like, they're not even dreaming at this point. Why are they having weird visions? The weird vision of was of somebody falling off the roof. So they're like, ah, oh, the roof. So they run up to the roof. They don't say it like that. Um, but they... <laughs> um, so they get up to the roof, and Miranda is singing a lullaby to the mm. baby. So good. She- you know how Miranda just talks for some reason? Like, she just says things when she should shut the fuck up. Yeah. She was like, you were so pure and I made you this She's way. like, you were an angel and I turned you into a monster. First of all, she's an incest vampire rape baby. There's a lot more wrong besides you. Yeah. Who, uh, whose father didn't touch her for the first six months of her life. Uh, you might not be the problem here, but just, it was basically like the flat, a repeat of her like being like, you are so strong, but you're still a child inside. And you are just lost, like, fuck you, Miranda. Like her fuck bullshit. You. This is just bullshit. And then, so they run out and they're like, Miranda, get back from the land. Like, they weren't even concerned about her. They're, they're like, like, give us the baby. Give me, give me the baby. baby. Like, you can fucking go. Bye bye. Give me the fucking baby. Like, like which is shady a little bit. Especially uh, because, like, no, 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 no. It's, it's a little bit shady because uh, four minutes ago in the episode, Roman told her that none of them would be there without her, that he needed her. And he's about to be like, fine, throw yourself off a building. Just don't hurt my baby. So, like, am I mad about it? Nah. Is it shady? A little bit. Yeah. Didn't see. Um, but so, he's like, just give me the baby. Just, come on, just give me the baby. And Destiny's like, just come back here. Come back. Destiny's the only one who seems to, like, try- want Miranda to also return. The boys are just like, give us the baby. We can get this elsewhere. We don't even need it. We have each other. Yeah. Um, We're dads of the year. So then she jumps. <laughs> she she doesn't jump. She slowly walks backwards off the building. In the most and, dramatic AF way possible. And the thing is, is that she I was like expecting like, oh my god, the baby's gonna fly back up. Like, she literally baby, did. She was like, I mean, I did have a thought that the baby could fly, but Monica was all in on the baby flying. Yeah, I was like, the baby's gonna levitate back up and just go boom. Like, it wouldn't surprise yeah. me because she can do all the weird shit. Yeah. So, she gonna fly back up, and then Miranda's gonna be the only person that dies. And then, and then I was like, oh, what the fuck? Because then this raptor claw comes and grabs the baby, and then this serpent tail comes and grabs Miranda, and it flies back up to the top of the fucking thing, and we see the stingray motherfucker bitch, who's an actor. And I promise you, we will be posting the picture. Yeah. Of this horrible, it is horrible just, mess. It is the worst thing I have ever seen. I am disgusted. I am ashamed. They should feel sorry for themselves. And also, yeah. at this point, Olivia has left the building because Olivia's down in the street 
outside of Godfrey looking up because there was snow behind her when they were, she was outside the building. Yeah, she was outside. Dr. Price was inside looking up. I don't know what floor he was on, but they were all just staring up at this big ass flying away monster and it disappears with the baby and Miranda flies away. And, um, and then in what may be the weirdest flex absolutely ever, Mm -hmm. the credit song is the love song tape that Olivia was going to show Norman. Panning around. But it's not just her singing. It's literally the video of it. The whole time the credits are playing. For no reason. And like, like the camera's moving around and you think like you're going to like... Yeah, the camera's like moving around the room. You thought something was going to pop out or somebody was going to be there or you were going to get a hint. I thought it was going to be Christina come screaming in her grave 2.0. No. No. Nothing. There was one piece of IMDb trivia for this episode. And that was that, uh... (sighs) Price put the cult bodies through a wood chipper. To put into the the Jamba Juice for the vampires. Just like he told... Chernobyl he was going to do to her. So he wasn't lying when he had that flex. He really said, I will put you through a wood tripper. Which, like, kind of makes me think he's a little bit of a a sadist. And I wouldn't mind if he choked me in bed. I might have to edit that out. (laughs) You might. You might. You just might. But I won't. But I'll feel guilty about it. Here's the thing. Who? Let's you know, let's talk about the good. Who was your saving grace this week? Andreas. Yeah, Andreas, he was just like, thank you. I loved him in this episode. Yeah. And like and I mean, there were other characters that I didn't hate this episode. Like, Roman didn't do anything wrong this episode. I really liked Destiny at this episode. But, like, saving grace, Andreas, because I just cheesed the whole time he was on the screen. Facts. And, honestly, Price is because Price was just sassy. His sassy self. And, like, also, like, his, I love seeing, like, his, like, vulnerable side so much. It's so nice. Yeah. And then- Oh, I'm punching Olivia and Norman because they're bo- they both did really shitty things with because of one another. Um, let's see. Who would I like to punch? Olivia. Norman. Michael's left eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> left eyebrow. Uh, mostly because, like, right-handed. It's easier yeah. to get to the left. Yeah. Um, Miranda. Yeah, her too. Dr. Spivak in both human and weird demon form. Um, All of the guards who couldn't figure out where Miranda or Olivia were. Uh, Mm -hmm. Beaumont, but also he got shot, so that was kind of funny. Um, Mm -hmm. Everyone besides, basically everyone besides uh, Price, Shelley, Priscilla, Roman, Peter, Destiny, and Andreas. Everyone else can get punched. Oh, yeah. Anna, the dumb slut, she can get punched. Yeah. She didn't really do anything. Who? Pearl. Oh, Pearl. Yeah, Pearl's pretty, pretty chill. She was just, like, unknown. Right. Uh, yeah, everybody, every single other person could get punched. Yeah. I would be okay. Even the three that are d- dead. I would even punch their dead bodies. And, um, so, for the season two finale, sorry our finale episodes are never fun, because, um, Yeah, well, maybe if the show didn't suck so much. Yeah. But, uh, listen, I want to be so done with talking about this episode. 
uh, I, I, uh, 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 if you have any complaints and you want to be just as mad as we are, you can email us at uh, deathandaliens at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Death and Alien. Um, also, we started a new series on Instagram of photos where we are taking um, all of the characters from Hemlock Grove and comparing them to characters from our favorite childhood TV and movies um, and books mm-hmm. to uh, absolutely ruin your childhood and prove that Hemlock Grove is just childhood with trauma. Um, yeah. The series started today, December, or today, January 2nd, so it'll have been a week for you, and a new comparison photo will come up every Saturday morning and Wednesday morning. Um, so if you have any ideas or funny things you want to do, check out our posts on that young Instagram at Death and Aliens. Mm-hmm. And then you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Monica.Lynn underscore. That's the Instagram. And then uh, Mon underscore Lynn underscore on Twitter. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at E-M-K-A-Y underscore superstar. There is something in my throat and I have to itch my throat. I'm so sorry. My voice got real weird for a second. Uh, (laughs) You know, next week will be great because uh, Courtney's gonna be will be here with us, and um, I will be day drinking. I'll be night drinking. Courtney will also be night drinking. Um, it'll be great. We all deserve it after watching this episode. Oh, one hundred. And then after that, we will have a betweener episode. But we still haven't decided what it is, so please give us ideas. Give us an idea, something. Please. God. Yeah. All right. I'm glad we're done with this. See you guys next week. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>